Here is a 1981 Sanyo model RD2003 cassette deck. And no, this is not a mistake. This is part two of the repairs of the Nordmende CD1000 cassette deck. So please make sure to watch part one first so that this video makes sense. So what does this Sanyo cassette deck have to do with the Nordmende? Well, let me explain. The short version is the Sanyo cassette deck is getting scrapped so that I can repair the Nordmende. I know this will be controversial, so let's take a few minutes to explore this Sanyo. Starting at the front, the front panel is made from a really low-grade soft plastic. Sanyo has stuck some aluminium onto the lower half to make it look a bit nicer, but then they ruined it again by applying this shiny silver paint in the middle. This looks really ugly. I'm not sure what's up around here. This looks very, very faded. I'm not sure what color this was supposed to be, but it certainly doesn't look right now. The faceplate might look as if it had been made from silver plastic, but that's not true. This is white plastic that has only been painted silver. You can see it along here is a stripe where the paint did not reach. Also, the back panel is made from a really low-grade soft plastic. And if we take a look at what is on the back of the cassette deck, we find the audio cables are permanently attached. And then there is this, a beat cancel switch. Now, where do you normally find a beat cancel switch? on boomboxes and compact stereo systems. So now you know what this electronic circuit has originally been designed for. The bottom panel, as you can clearly see, is made from high-density fiberboard, and they did stuck a little bit of aluminium under the circuit board to provide some shielding, but then again, with a plastic back and a plastic front, I don't think there is really too much shielding going on. And around here, we have an absolutely tiny transformer. Let's move this closer so that we can appreciate that. Fist for scale. This transformer is tiny, and I would trust it with running the dial lights in there, but certainly not with running a whole entire cassette deck. And then, finally, the mechanism. The mechanism is right here. Really cheap, no-name motor. Looks kind of dubious. I'm sure it's going to have some sort of a problem. The problem that this mechanism has right now is, as you can see, the capstan belt is missing. And what has happened is the capstan belt has melted. So it is stuck around the motor pulley. You can kind of see it in there. It's stuck down in there around the flywheel. This is quite a mess. It would require a lot of cleaning. Now, I have not disassembled this mechanism, but I have taken a closer look around and this is not easy to disassemble. This is going to take quite a while to repair that, and you have to completely disassemble this just to clean all the rubber goo out of there. And you can also see lots and lots of plastic in this mechanism. At least it is a soft touch mechanism. But yeah, so this is all around a hideous, cheap cassette deck. And there is absolutely no doubt the Nordmende is much, much nicer. The Sanyo cassette deck contains these NE646N Dolby circuits. The Nordmende cassette deck contains the NE645B Dolby circuits, one of which is defective. I was really disappointed when I saw these NE646Ns, 
so close and yet so far. But then I looked up the data sheets and I found, first of all, the 645 and the 646 share the same data sheet. Looking through the data sheet, I found the only difference between the 645 and the 646 is the 646 has higher total harmonic distortion and the frequency response is less accurate. Aside from that, these chips are exactly the same. And then I also found this note regarding the suffix, and it basically says the only difference between the suffix B and the suffix N is that one little capacitor has been changed. Aside from that, the chips are entirely pin compatible. So you know what's going to happen. These NE646Ns are going into the Nordmende in place of the NE645Bs. The NE646s have been salvaged. The Sanyo cassette deck has been scrapped, so there is no point asking about it. But let me tell you, disassembling the mechanism just to the point at which you could have cleaned it up and replaced the belts just to get the back bracket off required the disassembly of so many bits and pieces I really don't know how anybody could have ever hoped to get that back together. That mechanism was clearly not designed with serviceability in mind. I am glad that I did not even attempt to repair that cassette deck because it would have ended in a disaster. The NE546s have been installed in the Nordmende CD1000 and they are socketed in case something goes wrong. And now comes the moment of truth. Is it going to work, or did I very badly misinterpret the data sheet? Let's find out. Power has been applied. Well, the auto stop keeps triggering, but that's not the fault of the ICs, I don't think. Oh, the counter is not running. That might be part of the problem. Now the counter is running, so the auto stop should not trigger. But the main thing is, we have audio, and it sounds good. Now what happens if we activate Dolby? Well, seems to work. It's very muffled. Okay. Next question, what happens in record mode? Let's find out. There we go. Recording not only works, it also sounds really good. I think this is a success. I'm now playing back the 3.15 kHz test tone cassette, which is recorded to 0 decibels VU. And as you can see, the right channel is pretty close, that's good enough. The left channel, however, is a little bit low. 
I'm monitoring the output signal of the cassette deck on the scope to make sure that this really is a problem with the playback level adjustment and not a problem with the meter calibration. But the oscilloscope, as you can clearly see, does confirm the reading of the meters. So I'll go and try to adjust the left channel playback gain to match the other channel. And I'd say that's looking good. It is advisable to double check the playback levels after doing extensive repairs to the electronics of a cassette deck. I ended up turning the playback levels down just a little bit on both channels, but as you can see, now it is very close to zero decibels. I just made a recording of the 3.15 kHz test tone on this cassette deck. Now, it's not a very good cassette that I used, it's not a very good cassette deck, so as you can see, the recording is not very stable, it keeps jumping around a lot. But what you can definitely see is the left channel is much louder than it should be. The right channel is pretty good. So I will get in there and correct that. I can actually see the left channel trimmer adjustment for the record sensitivity is set much higher than on the right channel. So that should be reasonably easy to correct since I already have a bit of a reference point with the right channel adjustment. Of course, this is a two head cassette deck, so it's not as easy as just monitoring what is being recorded onto the cassette while recording it. I will have to go back and forth and make a recording, then play back the recording, and then repeat. That did not take too long. As you can see, it is still very unstable, jumping around but it's much better than it was before. I'm happy with that. Here is testing the speed. It was a bit too fast. I corrected that, and as you can see, it is pretty close now. And here is Wow and Flutter. This cassette deck is rated for 0.18% Wow and Flutter, according to DIN. And as you can clearly see, we are well below that. And for comparison, here is the reading of the WFGUI software Wow and Flutter meter. Here is the cassette deck with the faceplate removed for some much needed cleaning. Unusual design, on this cassette deck, the piano keys do come off. So you have these keys, like so, and then on the actual mechanism, you just have pieces of uh, metal sticking out. Another interesting thing, this cassette deck has support for chrome, ferrochrome, and normal ferric tape. But on the board, you might be able to see that it says ferrochrome and then in brackets metal. So they were thinking about it, probably then found out you need more powerful heads to record metal tape, which they were not able to fit into the budget. This has been quite a long journey, but there it finally is. Cleaned up and fully working, the 1980 Nordmende CD1000 cassette deck. This is a recording I made earlier. Sounds quite good. Thank you for watching.